So did you know that last year for the first time there were more off course golf experiences than on course rounds played of over 25 million and that's only going to keep growing as golf expands with the technology. Well today I have someone joining us that's with a company that's at the forefront of creating off course golf experiences and both for entertainment and also for high performance training. Get into that today on the Mod Golf YouTube channel. So today my guest is Tim Brand, who is the Director of Business Development with Foresight Sports. And we're going to get into all the interesting things, the innovative things that they are doing in the sport and the golf technology space. And there he is. Tim, hey, thanks for joining me today on the Mod Golf YouTube channel. Thanks for having me on, Colin. Absolutely. Absolutely. So Tim, you and I just finished up. Uh, an audio podcast episode uh, for the Mod Golf Podcast, where we really had a deep dive into all the great things the company is doing, the origin story of the company, which I found was absolutely fascinating. So we got into that. Uh, but today we're going to talk about a few different things here on the Mod Golf YouTube channel. And the thing I'm going to start with here, Tim, is a question I didn't ask on the podcast. It's a question that I always open up the show and that's the icebreaker and that is your original connectivity to golf the first golf experience you ever had and who invited you and who introduced you to the game yeah great question wow that's going back a long time um i was nine years old and uh i was a big little league baseball player and i had a broken arm and um i just wanted to get out and hit something but it obviously uh didn't have a tee available to me like you know tee that you would use for baseball um and i was at my aunt and uncle's house and i was bored and looking for something to do and so i just picked up one of my uncle's golf clubs found a golf ball and then i went out into an open field that was behind their house which is a big softball field and um yeah i thought it would be easy you know despite having a cast on my arm uh which probably would have interfered with my ability to hit a golf ball. Um, I thought it would be easy to hit this ball sitting on the ground. And um, after about three swings, I was hooked. 45 years later, here I am. Here we go. There we go. So my understanding, you've been involved in the golf industry, working at other companies, and actually as a as a coach for, for many, many years. So you're kind of deeply ingrained in, into the golf industry. So tell me about your, your personal connectivity to foresight how did that opportunity come about and yeah and your background with the company tell us a bit about that sure so you know i've spent my entire career in the golf space um played competitively in junior golf played collegiately had a pretty decent collegiate and amateur career uh found out very quickly when i turned professional that that was not going to be an option as so many of us uh make that determination um, and I can only imagine trying to compete professionally in today's professional tours. Uh, it's more competitive than ever. Uh, from there, kind of got branched out and wanted to stay attached to the game. Uh, worked as a general manager, director of instruction, general manager for a fitting um, operation, uh, and and kind of did a lot of a lot of different things around the industry for a while. One of the most fun experiences uh, was working in the R and D department for a couple of big manufacturers and being able to get around the golf robot each week uh, and really kind of nerd out and figure out why things happen um, as far as the way the ball flies, the way it's the way it does and how the club relates to that. Um, from there, things just kind of continued to evolve. If you've got a little bit of R&D experience, you teach, you fit, um, it kind of paves the way to getting involved with golf technology. Um, a few years back uh, with some friends, uh, we started a company called TruSpec Golf, which is a club fitting company. Um, and we had aspirations of um, building an algorithm that would be able to fit golfers. And the first question we had to ask was, well, what technology should be used to harvest all of this data that we need for this algorithm? And through that process, um, really started to take a deep dive into launch monitors. Uh, and all of the results from that testing yielded that there was a clear-cut uh, winner when it came to the accuracy of the data uh, and and what we were actually seeing as an outcome from all of these captures. Uh, and that started the relationship with Foresight. So started as a customer, actually, 
Um, and after about five or six years of working as uh, working on the TrueSpec golf team as a customer, um, the opportunity came available to join the Foresight team. And I figured, why not? Um, especially looking forward at the industry and how off course golf is booming and how technology is proliferating. I thought it was a great move. Love this. Love this. So on the podcast and you can see down below there, we've got the link that's through, uh, through mod golf. You can go check out the episode, uh, that we have with Tim. And we talked about the origin story of foresight. We talked about the technology, all the different products that you offer and, uh, and a lot of the partnerships that you actually have. So let's focus on a couple of different things here with the time that I have you here, Tim. Let's talk about your connectivity, uh, whether it's brand ambassadors with social media influencers and some of the work you've done with them and PGA pros and even LPGA pros and, and Corn Ferry Tours. So tell us a little bit about how you get out there in the wild there and get uh, your products in front of the best players in the world that become advocates and ambassadors for all the good things that you're doing. Yeah, actually, it's a pretty easy um, storyline. It, it's all organic. It's all viral. Uh, the product itself is what speaks for itself. Um, we don't have any paid relationships with PGA Tour players. We don't have any paid relationships with influencers. Um, and so when you go to the PGA Tour and you, you go to a driving range, I just got an image from our PGA Tour rep um, today. And uh, it's, it's a great source of pride for those of us with Foresight Sports when we look up and down the driving range on the PGA Tour event and we see anywhere from 60 to 90 of our launch monitors out there being used each week. Um, and, and it's important to remember that these players are paying for the product. As I said earlier, we don't give the product away for free. And that's a testimony to the value that the launch monitor provides to these players, you know, in their performance and training applications that they use it for. So, um, you know, we do work with a lot of different influencers in the industry. Um, but as I mentioned earlier, none of those are paid relationships. Um, all of the folks that decide to align with our brand, it's because of the power of our brand and, and the quality of our products. Um, so when you look across technology, uh, you may see some messaging that such and such company is the official launch monitor partner of this entity or that entity. Um, at the end of the day, when the rubber meets the road, um, regardless of those commercial relationships, there's one technology that performance elite golfers are turning to uh, to get their information. Uh, and, and we're very lucky at kind of how that's evolved over the last few years. Nice, nice. Uh, I want to talk about, because you've been with the company for a while now, talk about the culture of the company because I talk about this a lot with startups that I work with as far as needing to really understand your why and your purpose and your vision and your value. So so tell us about this culture of innovation that seems to be so deeply ingrained and embedded in Foresight Sports. So yeah, tell us about the uh, the work environment, the culture you have there. Yeah, it's 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 fast paced. Um, right now we're very fortunate in that a lot of different entities around the industry value the quality of our data and our products. Um, so it seems, you know, every, not a day passes that a new party reaches out interested in working with us. Um, it's tough to reconcile the external roadmap to the internal roadmap. It takes a lot of resource, uh, allocation juggling and, um, but you know, who we are at our culture, um, most of us are golfers. Uh, so when you look at the DNA of the company, whether it's our founders, um, all different levels of skill uh, from some folks that played collegiately and professionally like myself to folks that are more the casual golfer and more interested in the more entertainment components of the applications that we serve. Um, it's a fairly broad cross section of different personas within the golf industry. Um, but everybody is is highly engaged with technology, obviously. Uh, whether it's folks on our software design team, whether it's folks on our hardware team, um, you know, we we are always looking at innovating the 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 next best thing. Um, something that you know, when we look across the marketplace, we now have two overhead launch monitors and three ground-based launch monitors that we offer. Uh, and if you include the Bushnell Launch Pro, that would be four ground-based launch monitors. When you look at that pace of innovation, um, you know, I don't think you see that pace of innovation on the hardware side. 
Um, so we're always looking at making our, our previous product obsolete by designing something that's disruptive and groundbreaking with the next product we bring to market. Our most recent two products were Foresight Falcon, uh, which is a golf only overhead device um, that's really works well for those that are looking for an indoor simulator application. They want something that works with righties and lefties, and they want something that doesn't require 14 feet of width in order to be able to install and use it. And then we, and then we also released our Quad Max, which was kind of a refresh to our legacy Foresight Quad machine. Um, Foresight Quad is what you'll find out on most PGA Tour driving ranges. If it has a silver backing, it's one of our legacy quads. If it has a white back casing, then it's one of the Quad Max machines. And that Quad Max offers a few more features that the regular quad doesn't offer, such as speed training and customized data displays on the device. Nice, nice. And Tim and I took a deep dive on the audio podcast into all of their product lines and the technology behind it, which I found was fascinating. But one uh, product we didn't talk about that I just realized you had, and that's called Sim in a Box. So tell me about that one. So when we look at simulators, there's the perception by a lot of golf consumers that they either don't have the space for one or they don't have the budget for one. And so um, our forward thinking leadership a few years back said, well, wait a minute, we are a premium optical launch monitor system that drives simulation, which means our technology works in the smallest footprint of all technologies that are currently available. So if you look at um, anything that's radar based, they are going to require a little bit of space between the unit and the screen and a little bit of space between the unit and um, where the, the, the ball gets struck from. And if you look at other overhead devices, because of the constraints in their capture zone, meaning where you can hit shots from, they require what's called a center strike sim. In a center strike sim, the user is hitting the balls from the middle of the simulator, and you need seven feet of clearance on both sides of the ball in order for a righty and a lefty to use it. With our products, we can package these into a space that's very confined um, because we don't require all of that extra space in order to collect data. And so our leadership said, well, let's package this in a consumer-friendly format where we kit everything together. By bundling or kitting everything together, we can give a little bit of pricing advantage to the consumer. Um, and we can service any budget. So you can have a simulator in a box kit, sim in a box for less than $10,000. And then that can scale all the way up to a $35,000 solution, depending upon your budget, what you want from a software perspective, and what you want to use from a hardware perspective. So it's, it's a very... Um, flexible program that we brought to market through sim in a box that allows us to serve all different types of spaces from a garage simulator all the way to you know a premium home simulator and it allows us to serve all types of budgets from somebody that doesn't have forty thousand dollars to spend a golf simulator at their house or they can go all in with us uh and and do an albatross package and, and get the best of the best so Sim in a box. I definitely need to have one of these. My my biggest hurdle for that is my non golf playing wife may have something to say about that. So I need to. Uh, maybe, maybe you've got a a one pager cut sheet of how to how to convince your non golf playing spouse to allow you to have a sim in the box. So I'll leave that to you to forward that to me, Tim, because I desperately <laughs> need that. Well, I may have a few talking points on how to win that conversation. <laughs> Well, I appreciate that. Well, I have included, as we can see on there, the uh, the link to the website there for Foresight Sports to learn about all of their product lines and everything that you've got going on there. Uh, as I also mentioned, uh, I do highly encourage our viewers here to become listeners. And I will include down below here the uh, in the notes for, uh, for the podcast episode so you can uh, join us and listen in for all the good things that Tim and I talked about there so uh so tim hey why don't we finish up there unless there's anything else you want to add here yeah really appreciate the time and um really appreciate the time obviously on the audio portion of this uh so for anybody that's tuned in on the youtube channel uh we we definitely took a deep dive so feel free to check out the audio format awesome good stuff all right tim thanks so much for joining me on the mod golf youtube channel today thank you colin